So it's been a while since I've done a house overview ranked list of uh, different uh, fragrance houses. So today I'm taking on the house of Histoires de Parfums and I've got 12 fragrances here that I'm ranking for you from my least favorite to my most favorite. And if I say from my least favorite to my most favorite, this is the only way you could do these ranked lists. So when you're ranking them against this, uh, the fragrances from the house, obviously one ends up at the bottom and the other ends up at number one. So 12 different fragrances for you for this house. And the first time I discovered this house was back in 2012. And I'll let you know which fragrance I bought where I discovered them here in San Francisco. But if you want to find out all about Histoires de Parfums and my favorite fragrances ranked from 12 to 1, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Small and Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, today I'm taking on the brand Histoires de Parfums. I first discovered them back in 2012. There was a fragrance that I bought from this house called Moulin Rouge. This is it right here. I immediately fell in love with it and I bought a bottle. And I still have some in here, obviously. It's, this is how much I have. And even though that's not distributed here in the States, I did find it in their boutique in Paris at the Histoires de Parfums boutique in the Marais. So I'm a fan of this house. They have some great releases and I'm gonna let you know all about the fragrances and what I think about them and where they end up on my list. But before I do, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And also I want to mention I do have a link to Twisted Lily in the info box. You can go there and discover the Histoires de Parfums fragrances and you can use my discount code PERFUMEGUY10 to save 10% off. All right, let's get started with the first one. Uh, this is at number 12. And this is a fragrance called Irreverent. That's this one right here. It's a black bottle, completely sealed. Uh, some of the bottles are all different, so obviously this is probably the only black bottle I have in here. And this is a, a fragrance that was launched as a trio of other fragrances. And the reason this ended up at number 12 is it's very, very dark and smoky and resinous. So it's an amber, but the very, very smoky, dark kind of amber. It totally suits the bottle, uh, very black here. And so that's why it's at number 12. It, there's, there's not a lot of sweetness with this fragrance and I like sweet fragrances, you know? And it's really dark and it's, it's, it's a little challenging to wear this kind of like really dark, smoky, uh, resinous fragrance, you know, an amber. But what it features is Elemi resin, Styrax, amber, oud, lavender, coffee, bergamot, sandalwood. It is definitely a dark experience. And as I said, I'm, I'm having a difficult time wearing this one uh, because of its dark notes and the smokiness. There's some churchy incense-like qualities in there. And even though they don't mention incense, I'm picking up those kind of notes in here, or at least an accord, uh, most likely from the Elemi resin with the oud kind of creating this like very church-like incense note in here. Either way, you might like something like this, but for me, it's at number 12 because it's the most difficult one to wear out of this particular list, uh, ranked list of Histoires de Parfums fragrances. So that's Irreverent from Histoires de Parfums. That's at number 12. Number 11 is Moulin Rouge, 18. 89 Moulin Rouge. And why did I like this one? So there was a few reasons why I really fell, fell in love with it. First of all, it was kind of lipsticky, makeup-y smelling because it has iris. It's also very musky, but there was some stuff under there that really kind of came through for me. The patchouli really did, did come through. And then there's also warm wood. So warm wood, absinthe kind of thing. It totally makes sense to be featured in this fragrance because this particular era uh, in France, in Paris, they did do a lot of absinthe and things like that so definitely prominent here but it's overly powdery you do experience lots of powder here uh, it's from the iris note there's musk of course patchouli I said but there's also rose here and there's some fruity plums under there with a little bit of tangerine and cinnamon uh, you have a great fragrance so the Moulin Rouge is about dancing and you know women putting on lots of makeup and powder and things like that so I think they've really captured uh, the idea of uh, that particular scenario here in this fragrance Moulin Rouge. Again, this might be a little challenging for you to get here in the States, 
but I did see it in their boutique in 2019 at the end of 2019 when I was there in Paris. So that's 1889 Moulin Rouge. Now this ne next one I really do enjoy for what it is, but it ended up down here because everything else is just a really substantial experience. And this particular uh, fragrance at number 10 is uh, a more of a minimalistic musky kind of an experience. This is the fragrance. This is not a blue bottle 1.5 and this particular fragrance is very musky and minimalistic and utilizes uh, you know fragrance notes like ambroxan and mineral notes and musk and aldehydes. So in the air in the end there are floral notes it'll come through definitely but the ozonic notes the aldehydes the ambroxan if you like ambroxan you're going to like this one. But if you compare it to something like this is not a perfume not a perfume from I'm thinking of this is not a blue bottle. If you if you uh, you know compared to something like not a perfume or not a perfume superdose, there's definitely some stuff happening here because it's not all about the ambroxan in in the not a perfume case. It's Cetalox, which is very similar to ambroxan, and that's all that's going on there. So you'll experience other stuff here, but I feel like it's still a minimalistic uh, fragrance. So it's for those folks that want. I mean, this would be a great office safe scent. I should have probably featured it in an office safe work fragrances video, but um, I'm talking about it here today. So that's the kind of fragrance it is. It's musky, it's clean, it's ozonic. With the ambroxan uh, coming in, you get like woody touches, some ambery touches as well. And there is a very, very light aquatic touches in there. But I think it's great. It's just, it's here because Everything else has more substance to it. That's why I'm ranking it low, but obviously it's not at the bottom because there is some stuff about this one that I really, really love. So that's, this is not a blue bottle 1.5. The next one I'm talking about is, this is not a blue bottle 1.2. And this is a, uh, this one right here. And with this one, these bottles are so good. I mean, I love these bottles, they're fun. Uh, there's a few of them. Um, this is a series. And the last one that came out in this series is 1.6. This is 1.2 and this one was 1.5. I like how they reversed the color uh, to white and it totally makes sense for this fragrance because as I said, it's a minimalistic musky fragrance, Ambroxan. So it makes sense that they put it in a white bottle even though it's called this is not a blue bottle. But this one actually is a very floral experience. I really like this one. Again, it's gonna get tough the more I go up to the top of the list. So I had to put this here and I think this was kind of a toss up between this one and the next one because I like them kind of equally. So I ended up putting this one here. Uh, this is 1.2 featuring notes of ylang ylang, lilac, lily of the valley, white musk, sandalwood, ivy, and pink pepper. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful floral fragrance, fresh, Musky, clean, but very, very floral. You definitely experience lots of lilacs in here. I mean, when I put my nose to it, it's all very lilac-y with that ylang ylang, ylang ylang under there and the lily of the valley adding some green floral touches in there as well. It's gorgeous, but sadly it's here. Um, I'm preferring the other one a little more, but this is, this is not a blue bottle 1.2. The next one I'm talking about is 1804, this one right here. So, there's a few fragrances that I have, um, like uh, there's a fragrance, uh, this is 1725 Casanova. So this one, I couldn't figure out what the theme was, so I'm just calling it 1804, because I think they used to all have different themes, like there's one with Marquis de Sade, but 1804 didn't have a theme, so I'm just calling it 1804. But with this particular one, it's a fruity kind of a, um, warm fragrance so it has fruity touches and warm touches but I think it kind of goes tropical on me with the fact that it has lots of pineapple with patchouli, vanilla benzoin musk, nutmeg, peaches, tr flower, cloves, jasmine, rose and sandalwood. So a lot is happening it's kind of a fusion of warm notes with uh, fruits plus uh, flowers, uh, if that makes sense, because a TR flower comes in quite prominently. TR flower can be kind of uh, tropical-esque. Obviously, it is a tropical flower, and with a combination of the pineapple in here as well, and it goes into a kind of like a warm, fruity, floral, tropical direction. It's the kind of fragrance it is. The pineapple is prominent. It's the most prominent note here, and I think it's not the fresh kind of pineapple. It's a little more... Um, 
uh, mature like you know it has a very uh, strong smell to uh, like the experience is a strong pineapple smell but what happens is a lot of other notes are coming in mixing with this one so you at points the, the pineapple is really strong and amplified other other times I'm getting more of, of a mix of the other notes with the pineapples if that makes sense so it's a sweet fragrance fruity floral tropical so that's 1804 from the house of Histoires de Parfums. Let me know if you know any of these fragrances I've discussed so far. Do you like any of them? What are your favorites out of them? And speaking of Casanova, the next one is 1725 Casanova. And this one I have a full review of on the channel. Um, you can go catch that. You can also catch a full review of this one, Irreverent. But this one actually, um, I hadn't thought about this. I travel to France quite frequently and I've traveled to the south of France a lot as well. But when you go to their farmer's markets or their markets, outdoor markets, you smell lots of lavender in the south of France. This is a lavender fragrance, but along with the lavender, you also experience or smell other, you know, whatever things they have selling. So this kind of reminds me of that because it's lots of lavender with vanilla, there's almonds, there's a little licorice, star anise, amber, sandalwood, grapefruit, citruses. So it's a combination of lots of lavender with vanilla and almonds but the licorice and the star anise really come up as well to add a nice aromatic spice to the the fragrance but overall it's kind of like a gourmand fougere style of fragrance that's different than your typical fougere fragrances you know in the end it's got lots of lavender and lavender is typically found in fougere fragrances and it's definitely prominent here uh, so it's a different take on uh you know fougere it's, as i said it's an edible kind of uh, fougere fragrance gourmand kind of leaning uh, fougere fragrance I, I think it's a great scent but sadly it's ended up here at this number but either way 1725 casanova is a great scent number six is a fragrance that probably should be at number one knowing me because it's my favorite note it's here because there's another fragrance that this one reminds me of from the same house so sadly this one ended up here but this is noir patchouli from histoires de parfums and for the patch ho why is this one here i'm going to tell you that it reminds me of marquis de sade i don't know why but they have a uh, a fragrance called Marquis de Sade 1740 and this reminds me of that and I kind of prefer Marquis de Sade a little more because there's a little more happening in there but as far as uh, noir patchouli goes according to notes it has top notes of patchouli heart notes of patchouli and then also base notes of patchouli but in addition to those there's lots of leather and Marquis de Sade has leather as well uh, and, and patchouli but this one also has floral notes cardamom coriander juniper musk and vanilla but i feel like this also has a little bit of something like absinthe or uh, a note called uh, artemisia because 1740 marquis de sade also has this note in, in here i don't know what it is but there's something green about it and the fact that this is kind of greenish on the side here just takes me to that uh, green uh, direction that Marquis de Sade goes into. I think it's still a great uh, patchouli fragrance. It's a little on the boozy side, not necessarily chocolatey or gourmand patchouli, uh, not thick like uh, gourmand fragrances can be, but a solid patchouli. And if you like the idea of leather and kind of floral spiciness with a little bit of a green touch under there, I think Noir Patchouli will satisfy. So that's Noir Patchouli from the House of Histoire the parfums. So the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is the fragrance they launched last year focusing on yuzu, that popular note uh, that's really you know popular lately with uh, lots of fragrances using this fruit. But this is this is not a blue bottle 1.6 featuring yuzu with orange blossom, white musk, orange grapefruit jasmine lotus vanilla geranium this is really really great guys this was a great fragrance i just really love the combination of yuzu or grapefruit or pomelo with the flowers of orange as you know the orange blossom neroli kind of thing and this one does it great there's a several of these styles all over the place from different brands and i quite dig it you know i love these the combo works like the bitterness of the yuzu the the you know the zinginess from the yuzu or the grapefruit or the pomelo really, you know, complements the floral uh, touches and the, you know, citric floral touches of the orange blossom and neroli. And this one definitely is really, really great in that way. But you know, there's also lots of jasmine in here that you really do pick up. It's really, really beautiful. The combination is great. And this is a solid, solid release. This is not a blue bottle 1.6. Check it out if you don't know it. 
This is actually, uh, I fell in love with it when I did visit the boutique, uh, the Histoires de Parfums boutique. I had never smelled it before and I thought for the longest time, it's focusing on the year 1969, and I thought for the longest time since 1969 is known for patchouli, things like that. I thought it was another patchouli fragrance similar to Noir Patchouli and I kind of had dismissed it, which I probably should not have because I love patchouli either way. But when I smelled it, I was like, what the heck? This is so delicious. Really, really delicious. It's a chocolate gourmet but fruity chocolate gourmand. That's 1969. Um, really, really yummy. Really yummy. It's a fruity gourmand uh, with peaches, cardamom, dark chocolate, rose, cloves, patchouli, coffee, musk, white flowers. Very, very delicious, guys. The peaches are definitely prominent and they really do complement that dark chocolate in here. But some of the other notes comes in as well, like the coffee, the, the rose, the cloves, just a really solid release. And it's actually very, very cozy as well. The experience is ultra cozy and creamy. It's almost like melted chocolate against some of the other notes that are in here. That's just really, really gorgeous. I feel like cardamom also comes up with a, a couple of other fragrances that's coming up and I think they do cardamom pretty nicely. Either way, if you don't know 1969 and you love chocolate fruity fragrances, definitely check it out. I think it's definitely a solid one and I should not have dismissed it thinking it's a patchouli fragrance. The next one is uh, 1740 Marquis de Sade and as I said, I do find these two somewhat similar. Uh, they're not identical, but I feel like they have or use, are using some of the same notes. But this one has uh, some stuff going on with it that's not in Noir Patchouli. But I don't know, I think one or the other, like almost like this might be an evolution of Noir Patchouli or, um, uh, or Noir Patchouli is an offspring of 1740 Marquis de Sade, if that makes sense. But 1740 Marquis de Sade has notes of Immortel, Leather, Patchouli, Labdanum, Elemi Resin, Cardamom, Artemisia, Coriander, Birch, but it's very, very sexy. If you guys don't know much about Marquis de Sade, there's a movie out there. Um, and uh, I, think, uh, I think it makes sense, this kind of fragrance, to be inspired by this particular character. Uh, it's a great scent. The Immortel has a dry, slightly caramelized brown sugar qualities contrasted with the leather, the you know, the animalic parts about the leather, throw in the patchouli, as I said, there's patchouli here, it's noir patchouli, um, and then there's the ambery touches, and then that, that greenness from the Artemisia note comes in, it, it hints at the, you know, noir patchouli even further. But there's, the reason this one's here is because I like it, because it, it's got a little more things happening with it, like the Immortel note, which is not in that fragrance, gives it a, enough of a, uh, you know, difference to uh, rank this one a little higher than the other. I would call them both patchouli-esque fragrances. They're also very, very sexy. One other thing I forgot to mention about this one, there is a light cumin touch under there that I quite like and I find sexy as well. Either way, 1740 uh, Marquis de Sade is uh, number three on the list. Two more left, guys. The next one at number two is Edition Rare Veni. This one uh, again, one of the ones I smelled in the store in Paris and I immediately fell in love with it, but this one is like a it's very spicy, aromatic a cardamom bomb. If you like cardamom fragrances, which I actually featured this in my cardamom fragrances, you should probably check this one out. Edition Rare Veni is lots of spices, but cardamom is king here with cinnamon, lavender, galbanum, ambergris, caramel, saffron, Gaiac wood, benzoin. So in the end, it has some gourmand touches like sweet things in there. There's some saltiness from ambergris, some bitter greenness from galbanum, but lots of aromatic touches and spicy, warm, spicy touches with cinnamon. I feel like the notes are so all over the place that they shouldn't work. It works really, really great. I just really love the cardamom in here. The cardamom is uh, a very pungent, aromatic, and um, smell that's uh, not necessarily like a warm experience. There's a freshness about the, the cardamom smell and it's a nice contrast here because it adds the freshness to some of the warm notes that are thrown in here, which makes for a great wearing experience. I really do love this one. If you don't know this one, check it out. It's Edition Rare Veni from the House of Histoires of Parfums. And can you guess my number one? Uh, this is number one because it's really, really good. Although it does remind me of another fragrance uh, from another brand. It's at number one because uh, it's a great, great amber. I'm talking about Ombre 114, and this is, uh, re reminds me of um, 
Maitre Parfumé at Gantier's uh, Ombre Presso. I don't know why, but they, they remind me of one another. But either way, this is lots of amber. Lots of amber here with vanilla, benzoin, tonka beans, musk, sandalwood, nutmeg, patchouli, rose, geranium, and cedar. So it's nice contrast of warm, ambery, uh, you, know, you know, resinous kind of notes, vanillic notes with aromatic touches and musk and some woods like sandalwood. The geranium is pretty prominent, and I almost feel like there's... Uh, a little bit of lavender in here as well, but uh, either way, it's a gorgeous amber, very, very warm and spicy. But you know that the aromatic touches, like the geranium, gives it a very fresh quality to it. And that's why it's, it's number one. It's, it's one of my favorite kinds of styles of fragrances, ambers, that I really like to wear. These are the kind of fragrances you would wear when it's cold outside or when you want some warmth, you know, like spicy warmth. That's what it is for. And yes, it does remind me of Ombre, Ombre Perceau. I don't know why. They have uh, similarities to one another, which doesn't matter because ambers uh, are a certain kind uh, of, of fragrance and they'll remind you of one. I mean, a lot of ambers do remind me of one another and this one definitely does remind me of that one. But either way, my number one favorite is Ombre 114 from the House of Histoires de Parfums. So that's my list of uh, 12 favorite Histoires de Parfums fragrances uh, ranked. Uh, let me know if you had these fragrances, how you would rank them, or if you have just oh, several of these Show me a rank list of which ones you have. In addition to that, let me know if there are other fragrances from this house that I should check out. You know, there's so many fragrances out there and uh, I would love to explore more. So if you have one that I did not mention here that you really love, I'd love to find out what it is so I can, you know, go check it out. But I think this is a solid list of some of their best fragrances. Uh, we've covered a lot of different styles and different notes in, the, in this particular video and I hope it helps you guys out uh, with trying to figure out what to check into from this house. Either way, guys, thanks so much for tuning in uh, today to watch my top 12 Histoires de Parfums fragrances video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. You can also send me questions at lfsgquestions at gmail.com for any video topics or things like that you want to see on the channel or any fragrances I should check out. But other than that, please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. I forgot to include this uh, message at the beginning of this video, but I thought uh, let's just stick it at the end. Now this week I was planning on doing another questions and answer video, but let's stay till the uh, next week for that one. And I know I promised one of these to a few folks, but uh, unfortunately it's not coming together this week. But uh, next week I'll have another question and answer video and that will include 12 questions that you guys have sent me that I'm answering. So if you have questions, send them to me. But life has gotten a little busy lately trying to get vaccinated. Uh, still trying to find furniture for this uh, space that I'm, you know, unable to track down. So things are a little crazy at the moment, but uh, a question and answer video coming next week. So stick around for that. And once again, if you guys haven't uh, checked out my uh, perfume t-shirts in my Teespring uh, merch shop, please do. I have a link in the info box and I'm doing a 10% off discount for those. It's a uh, channel is the diff discount code. You can use that to save 10% off of all my merchandise. And uh, one of the t-shirts I should show you here is uh, Patch Ho, this one right here. Uh, this is for the patchouli lover. And of course, today I discussed patchouli noir from Histoires de Parfums. You can wear the perfume and also you can wear the t-shirt to show that how much you love patchouli. Either way, guys, stay tuned for the question-answer video next week. Sorry that it didn't make it this week, but next week for sure. Thank you.